Hello and welcome to Kettle and Bones, where we make really delicious, really healthy food. And you can too. Can you feel it? Yeah, I can too. L'amour. Love is in the air. At this time of year, there's only one thing that's on everyone's mind, and I think you know what I'm talking about. Cake! Ah, but how do we make our cake fantasies a reality without blowing our low-carb or keto diet? That's a tricky one. Wait, no it's not. It's really very simple. Today, we're making strawberry not-so-shortcake. Let's get cooking. If you've been eating low-carb and or keto for long, you may be familiar with some cake variations already. One of the most popular low-carb cakes is known as the mug cake. It's quick and easy to make, and it's pretty tasty. Look, I'll show you. In a mug, you add about a tablespoon of butter, that's about 14 grams, melt it in the microwave, about a minute or so on low power, then you add either a tablespoon, about seven grams, of coconut flour, that's what I'm using today, or you can use three tablespoons, about 18 grams, of almond flour. Both work really well. Then you add a dash of baking powder, non-sugar sweetener to taste, I'm using erythritol, one whole egg, and thoroughly beat and mix everything until it's all well incorporated. Then it gets just about 60 seconds on high in the microwave. I know, microwave cake sounds very weird, but just trust me. The exact window of time can vary from one microwave oven to another. In this one, for example, the sweet spot for microwaving a mug cake is actually about 1 minute 10 seconds. You may need one or two test runs to nail down the exactly perfect cook time, not only for your microwave oven, but also for whatever mug or dish you're using. That can affect the cook time a little too. And voila, it's a cake in a mug, as advertised. Really low carb and surprisingly moist and cakey. This is a great recipe to have in your back pocket if you're craving sweets hard and you just need to scratch that itch like now. Spread some nut or seed butter on this or maybe you whip a little bit of fresh cream with vanilla. And this is a really nice ultra low carb dessert. Not much to look at though. If your sweetheart is expecting a delicious romantic dessert after Valentine's Day dinner, sliding this in front of them probably isn't going to get you a great reaction. It tastes great, but we can do better. We're going to make a slightly modified version of this using not mugs, but shallow ramekins. A wide bowl or even a shallow plate could work for this too, just as long as they're microwave safe. Just like the mug version, we start with a pat of butter in each dish, one tablespoon or about 14 grams each. And into the microwave these go until the butter is melted. We're tripling the recipe for our batter, so that begins with three tablespoons of coconut flour, about 21 grams, or again, you could use nine tablespoons of almond flour, about 54 grams. Three generous dashes of baking powder, Three portions of erythritol or your non-sugar sweetener of choice to taste. Don't worry too much about the sweetness of the cake itself. You want a little sweetness, of course, but you'll have a chance to really taste and adjust the frosting we're going to make in just a moment. Our batter gets three eggs, a splash of vanilla, a dash of cinnamon, and a thorough mixing and into the pools of melted butter in our ramekins, we're going to evenly distribute the batter, giving each of them a little stir to incorporate some of that melted butter. Each of these goes into the microwave, this time for one minute, 15 seconds. What? I know, I said one minute, 10 seconds for the mug cake. What's the deal? Well, the size and shape of your dish will affect the cook time as well. I know from experience that just one minute, 10 seconds will leave the center of these a little too soft and gooey. I have to go to one minute, 15. Like I said, you'll need to experiment a bit to find exactly the right timing for your microwave oven and for your chosen dish. Ding, this is done. Ah, it's also really hot. Use an oven mitt. Set the cakes aside to cool, and while that is happening, we're going to make a delicious frosting. This starts with about half a packet of cream cheese, that's four ounces or about 113 grams, and three tablespoons of butter, about 42 grams. Both of these are softened. I actually ran these in the microwave on low until they were nice and soft, not melted. We don't want these to be hot. 
I'm going to whisk these together powerfully until they're nice and creamy. And then, speaking of creamy, in goes some heavy whipping cream. This is probably a good cup and a half, maybe two cups. Let's call it uh, between 360 and 480 milliliters. Season with erythritol sweetener to taste, as well as some cinnamon and vanilla extract. And we're mixing until the heavy cream is whipped and becomes thick and, well, creamy. You've noticed, as usual, I'm eyeballing the measurements for this frosting recipe. It's extremely forgiving, and it actually is just based on what you want from the end result. More cream cheese and butter will, of course, give you a heavier, richer frosting. The amounts I've used are going to give us some really nice, luxurious richness, but it's mostly going to be light and airy, like a whipped cream, while still being thick enough to stick to our cake like a frosting should do. This is perfect. Thick and spreadable, but not too heavy. Now is the time to take a taste and adjust the sweetness if you need to. Our cakes have cooled, so using a silicone spatula or other soft, flat implement, let's get those out of their dishes. We are ready to go with our frosting, a plate on which to build our cake, and sliced fresh strawberries. I have sliced eight medium-sized strawberries, roughly 100 grams, which brings in only about five and a half grams of net carbs total. For something that also adds sweetness, that's not bad at all. Starting with one round of cake, let's slather that generously with frosting and add a nice layer of berries. A little more frosting will sort of seal in the berry slices. And we're basically just going to repeat that all the way up. Cake, frosting, berries, more frosting, more cake. Let's frost our top layer of cake, and then let's work around the sides to make sure everything is filled in all the way down to the plate, and there are no bits of exposed cake showing through. That looks like more or less full coverage. Now before I finish this and actually try to make it look really nice, I'm going to get this cold to make sure the frosting doesn't start to slip down the sides. I'm actually going to let this sit in the freezer for about 10 minutes. The frosting is going into the refrigerator so that when we start working with it again, it will be nice and chilled as well. About 10 minutes have passed, so let's finish this up. I'm going to make one more pass around the sides to ensure all the little cracks and crevices are filled with frosting. Very good. And let's add the remaining strawberries in an alluringly symmetrical and attractive way. The rest of these slices I'll just arrange around the plate. And how about one last sprinkle of cinnamon for a little flavor, texture, and color? This could also be cocoa powder or espresso powder, nutmeg, whatever you prefer. And how about a nice fresh green sprig of mint leaves? That's a classic cake garnish. And it is just that easy. This can stand in the fridge until you're ready for the big low-carb dessert reveal, or like me, just slice into it right now. That's gorgeous. If right now you're staring in disbelief thinking, this looks way too good, this can't possibly be something that's okay for me to eat, hold on, check this out. Total net carbs from the coconut flour is 4.5 grams, and by the way, if you went with almond flour, it's more like 3 grams. Add that to the 5.5 grams from the strawberries, and we have a complete cake containing protein, fats, fiber, a plethora of minerals and nutrients, and only 10 grams of net carbs. And we'll easily get six generous slices from this whole cake. That's fewer than two grams of net carbs per serving. Whether you're sharing this with that special someone, or if this is all for you, this is a cake that fits your daily carb budget. And I would argue is definitely more attractive than your basic mug cake. Stay with Kettle and Bones for many, many more simple, quick, and easy recipes and techniques that will help ensure a long and happy life together with the foods you love and that love you. But for now, just enjoy your strawberry not-so-shortcake.